the first sort of um, understanding you have of, of all things is that nothing stays the same. Everything changes. And what is the force behind that change? Is there a, an invisible hand? Are there laws of nature? I mean, that's been uh, you know, mankind's great quest for as long as the written and certainly before probably as well. Uh, what causes things to happen the way they do? And scientists have now come to understand that there are some fundamental forces Four of them in particular. Tonight we're really focusing on gravity, but as you properly said, gravity is everywhere. We experience it all the time. Every time you uh, fall off a log, every time you drop something, you know that gravity is at hand. So well, how did Aristotle think about it? So the ancients thought of it as, uh, as really matter trying to seek its right place in the universe. If the center of the universe was the Earth, then the more solid, more uh, the denser matter would try to get to the center of the universe, and, and lighter things would try to move to their right place. So rocks would fall, and steam and smoke would rise, and that was just the natural order of things. But he made the prediction that, therefore, uh, heavier things should fall faster. And that uh, was undone, shall we say. Well, people had started to wonder, hmm, that's not exactly right. How can we measure that? Can we take what my uh, experience shows and see whether that's true? So I did actually bring a prop here. And this is going to be messy, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, I am not Galileo, and we are not at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And uh, in fact, um, the uh, uh, story of Galileo and the Leaning Tower of Pisa probably is not correct. But pardon me for a moment. It's natural. Again, I was saying that your, what we see with our eyes gives us our first clue of what the universe is all about. So if I were to, and I'm going to, and I hope this doesn't splat all over here, uh, drop these two objects together, um, the, uh, well, well, let's do it first and tell me what you see. Which drop first? Apple. The apple. And naturally, of course, because it's denser and heavier, right? Is that the right answer? So Aristotle thought, of course, of that, course. that proved his point. It makes sense. It's what we all see. It's what we all experience. Uh, so in fact, um, that turns out not to be the case. Uh, the, the apocryphal story, or the legend goes, that Galileo tr took a cannonball and a musket, two different objects, dropped them from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and saw that they fell at the same time. Um, that's probably legend. There's, there's not really, he never described his own experiment in that way. But, uh, but he did work with inclined planes, in other words, rolling balls down long, sloping planes, and saw that things did. If you put two balls of different masses, roll them down the plane, they rolled down at the same time. And what he really discovered was that acceleration, the rate of acceleration, was universal. All things are attracted to the Earth at the same rate. And that was, of course, completely contrary to the, the view that Aristotle, uh, the Aristotelian view of the universe. But we have some proof um, that the, uh, the apple and the feather. We do. And I've put down my little machine here, so let me put this back. This now, uh, oh, well, the reason, uh, we'll explain it after the video. This will show you what happens. We have to go to a special place, a special environment, to really do the, the test properly. And fortunately, we have been to some special environments for that. Uh, can we copy the low solar wind and uh, penetrometer drum in the ETB? This was not filmed in Arizona. <laughs> not quite yet. I haven't put the solar wind in yet, but I will shortly. Oh, I'll watch this. Oh, a, a good picture there. Be I've got the beautiful picture, Dave. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon? And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? A little different than uh, what we just saw. Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. So now, of course, the trick was to, uh, oh. 
<laughs> is to, thank you, um, <clears throat> is to uh, pick up the feather and the, uh, I couldn't find a feather, the pigeons were too fast, so I got a, a leaf from across the way, but the principle is the same. And so that is the great uh, recognition that all things in, in the same gravitational field are accelerated in the same way. And Newton categorized that, was able to write down uh, and, and codify and do, uh, um, mathematically uh, make it all hang together in a picture that worked for hundreds of years and was very successful mm -hmm. and is still successful with our local environment. I mean, we work on scales. I, I drop an apple, I drop a, a, a ballpoint pen. They still fall at the 32 seconds per second acceleration. So Newton was able to codify this in the mathematics, but uh, over time, there were a few glitches. In fact, this beautiful photo we see here shows some of those glitches. Uh, what's happening here that makes Newton a little nervous? Newton would not know how to explain this image. Well, this is a, a doorway to the rest of this discussion because it is how we understand gravity today. Thank you to uh, Mr. Einstein. <laughs> and uh, it is, as you said in your introduction, having to do really with space-time curvature. And I love this picture because it, they are showing something called gravitational lenses, light being bent. You know, light always goes on a straight line. So why would light be bent? Well, it's because straight lines are bent. Space space-time is bent by the presence of mass, and that is another entirely different way of describing gravity, and, and that has success on, on the kinds of scales and masses that we now uh, you know, are able to probe. Newton couldn't probe those things. He, he didn't have a telescope that could show this image. He just simply didn't have the, the apparatus. So it wasn't that he was not smart or that Aristotle was dumb. It's just that we are always limited by our ability to, to uh, measure, to observe and measure. Well, we and could, that's where we're on the threshold of some new measurements today. 